Hey, I'm no expert, but it looks like Canada's pretty good at this hockey thing. Investor Beat starts now. Thanks for watching. I'm Chris Hill alongside Jason Moser. Canada, doing it to the U.S. once again in Olympic hockey. Kudos. I, I offended our Russian viewers the other day, so kudos to our Canadian viewers. Uh, let's start with the Olympics because Under Armour, it was just about a week ago, Under Armour was under fire. Yep. The U.S. speed skating team was, some people were blaming Under Armour's new suits, the Mach 39s, for their poor performance. They switched to other suits, didn't really help their performance. We kind of have come full circle, haven't we? We have, and I think this is one I've, I got a little bit worked up uh, about over the weekend and uh, wrote an article about it, a couple of interviews about it. And for me, it really all just boiled down to there seemed to at least be a plausible explanation that maybe their training regimen was to blame, not the suits. And I, and I even think if they had, you know, if they, if they kind of pinpointed their training first and then said second, maybe it was the suit. Maybe this would have been perceived a little bit differently, but just to go straight to the suit was a little bit uh, unbelievable for me, considering they worked with Lockheed Martin uh, to develop this thing. He spent about a million dollars and just tested it ad nauseum. Uh, and so, yeah, like you said, it's come full circle. Essentially, we... We, we can more or less ascertain that it wasn't the suit. And, uh, and uh, so this morning, the news that Under Armour and, and the uh, U.S. Speed Skating Association will renew that contract uh, for eight more years, I think is just a real testament to not only the position that Under Armour is gaining in the athletic world on a global scale, uh, but also I think it's just nice to see, you know, the speed skating side of things. They, they're able to kind of Swallow a little pride, maybe maybe admit that they got beat, kind of move on, and let's let's go from there. So I think that they didn't want to drag this out any longer than right. they had to. I think this really does uh, bring some closure to it, and I think that long term this really opens up Under Armour uh, for some opportunities to grow into that international stage that they're looking uh, to expand into. What do you make of the stock, though? This is one of those stocks that seemingly never looks cheap. What do you say to someone who says, "I'm just waiting for a pullback"? Yeah, and you know, I, I, I've seen a lot of people saying that for the past couple of years and that pullback just hasn't come. Uh, they really killed it this holiday season. They tapped into what consumers are really focused on, and that's just getting good deals but free shipping. And uh, so, you know, Amazon.com is obviously ruling this e-commerce space, but companies like Under Armour are doing a great job with that direct-to-consumer. Uh, you focus on that free shipping, and so any, any order that you bought, it was either going to be free shipping or free two-day shipping. And so that immediately, I think, just that, that removes that one hurdle right there, and the numbers show that it was just a tremendous holiday season. I don't know that you're going to see this stock pull back very often, but it is a good stock to add opportunistically. So when you find that chance to buy, buy, and don't think it's the last time you're going to buy because you probably have a chance to add to it again. But I think in 20 years, investors holding a, holding on to Under Armour shares today are going to be very happy. Now, almost at the other end of the spectrum, we have Groupon today. Shares really taking a hit today. Uh, fourth quarter results, not very good. And then guidance for Q1 looking even worse what is going on with this company? When <laughs> I think it's fair at this point to say, when are they going to start reporting a profit? Well, it is a far different company than than what it was when it first went public at twenty dollars per share. Uh, you know, they were utilizing that push strategy of sending emails. You know, your, in, your inbox gets peppered with those emails with all these deals. The problem is, at some point or another, you, you start lose. It, it loses all meaning because you're getting deals from Groupon, you're getting them from Living Social, and, and all these other participants in that market. There's no real competitive advantage. There, So I, I do applaud Groupon for trying to change the business model around. If you look at their mission statement now, their mission is to basically become the world's the, the world's operating system, the e-commerce operating system. Now that is a tall order when you consider you have Amazon and eBay out there that are really already owning the space. So I don't know necessarily that I, I think that Groupon stands a very good chance of winning in that space. It's going to cost them a lot to invest and play that game. And I think that the stock's reaction, the market's reaction to stock today, that tells us that, that the market's not really cutting them any slack. And, uh, and I think that's probably warranted. When you look at the stock, though, I'm sure there are some people looking at this saying, hey, look, down more than 20 percent. This is a if ever I'm going to buy in, this is the time to buy because it's cheap. Yeah. And I, I think that's a good point you make there. And, the, and my response to that is, you know, a stock is it's not cheap a for buy. A reason? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not a buy just because it's cheap. Cheap isn't an investment thesis. I know some value investors out there may disagree um, and, and maybe that's just a perspective thing. But cheap isn't a reason to buy there. There needs to be something on the horizon, a catalyst, whether it's a short short-term event or a long-term trend, 
cheap doesn't just cut it. Like you said, it's cheap for a reason. We wrap up this week. Let's look ahead to next week. What's a stock that you're watching? Well, Samuel Adams, Boston Beer, you know, that's just a really, a, it's a great company to follow. I think I, I learn a lot from them uh, just, just in and out with the, with the leadership they have there in, in, uh, in chairman and founder Jim Cook. Uh, I think I probably gave them a little help this holiday season, so I'm, I'm looking nice. forward to finding out. <laughs> Their earnings come out on Tuesday, and they're, they're continuing to roll out this Freshest Beer program, which I think more and more uh, retailers are picking up on. And then they have this little alchemy and science division where they try you know, to bring new craft brewers under their umbrella and, re and really grow that craft brewing segment. So uh, I'll be paying attention to their earnings on Tuesday. Good stock for the weekend. Absolutely. All I'm right, ready to for, get started. For Jason Moser, I'm Chris Hill. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on Monday.